Good evening. This is a special episode of On the Campaign Trail. Every Wednesday, we track key issues, moments, and personalities in the long run-up to Election Day. But tonight, we focus on Substitution Day. In the last few days, the election landscape has been shaken by withdrawals and substitutions. Has there ever been a week in Philippine election history as chaotic, as deliberately dramatic, as the week that ended at 5 p.m. today? On the campaign trail follows election-related developments using a different map. We know that the democratic project is in great danger. And that shapes how we navigate our way to 2022. It isn't just elections as usual. Is the substitution circus that we have just watched a clear sign of democratic decay? Or is it just politics as usual? I'm John Neri, and I'm joined tonight by three colleagues and a special guest to try to answer precisely those questions. Thank you for following us on the campaign trail. We are joined by Rappler Regional Coordinator Inday Espina Varona in Bacolod and two senior reporters, Bea Kupin and Lian Buan here in Metro Manila. We will be also joined in a bit by someone in Davao City who understands what it means to go up against the Dutertes civil society leader Mags Maglana. She is running for Congress against Deputy Speaker Polong Duterte. Inday, good evening. Good evening, John. Hi, Leanne. Hi, Bea. Hi, Leanne and Bea. Inday, Hello. This insane flurry of sub substitutions, are they a sign of democratic decay? Um. Well, and the kikita natin for the last week, there's been little sense of governance. I mean, people campaign, people run because they, they want supposedly to serve, right? But for a week, well, what we've seen is what? An orgy of drama with a backdrop of extreme extravagance, all those private plays and huge parties. And let's not forget, John, crime. Ang backdrop kasama yung crime dito. So it reminds me of the decadence of a crumbling empire. Maybe maybe that's too much, and maybe he hasn't been around that long to be called an empire. But it has that kind of scene, um, like people are flinging themselves all over. Everyone's crumbling to safeguard their turf, even while getting ready for the end, even when they're trying to exude confidence. And all that energy has been expended is focused solely. Hindi ko nakikita yung taong bayan dito eh. It's basically solely focused on self-interest, who gets what, protection. And it looks very much like a defensive play. An orgy of self-interest against a background of extreme extravagance and crime. Uh, that that really shows it's been a crazy uh, past few days. Uh, Bea and then Lian, can we backtrack a bit? Uh, can we identify the most important developments in the last several days? Important in the sense of most unexpected, maybe, but also in the sense of most consequential for 2022. Bea, maybe you want to start in Cebu. Oh, mauna ako, no, kasi mga isang linggo na ako hindi nakakahinga ng maayos. So, so sa Cebu, mga, what was that, just two weeks ago, right? It, it feels like forever now at this point. So, after two weeks of quarantine, kasi si Mayor Sara Duterte uh, got infected with COVID, um, yung first activity niya after that infection was to fly to Cebu. Um, initially, yung balita ay she was going to be attending a birthday party. Uh, magiging important yung identity ng birthday celebrant later on. Pero of course, yung, yung nag-standout dun sa Cebu meeting na yun is that she met um, uh, presidential aspirant Bongbong Marcos. So parang yun na nag-start na yung speculation ulit, di ba, na will Sarah be running for a national post come 2022? Of course, at this point, she kept saying over and over again na hindi re-election yung gusto ko for 2022. In fact, she did file uh, for re-election um, as Davao City Mayor. And then starting November 9, uh, sunod-sunod na yun. So nag-withdraw siya 
um, from re-election in Davao City. And then, um, speaking of extravagance, she flew to the private Balisin Island for the birthday of uh, Speaker Lord Velasco. And then she dropped by the wedding of Laka CMD um, chairman, uh, Senator Wong Revilla's daughter. She got married in the Revilla farm. Tapos side event dun sa kasal, ay nag oath taking na rin siya as a member of Laka CMD. Relative silence a few days. And then after that, uh, yun, announced na na she was going to be Laka CMD's vice presidential candidate via substitution. Over on the PDP Laban side, the other beat that I'm reporting on for the 2022 elections, um, after 5pm today, biglang walang standard bearer, walang vice presidential presidential candidate. Um, but the key personalities of PDP Laban are still in the running in 2022 under the, I have to check my notes to get this right, Federalismo ng Dugong Dakilang Samahan or PDDS. Uh, that's a relatively new party um, established by Greco Belgica in 2018. Um, so kung makita PDDS, play of words, DDS, mm -hmm. meron pa siyang, may touch pa ng federalismo. Um, so, uh, Bongbo, sorry, sorry. Uh, Senator um, Bongo from being the mahaba haba kasi yung, yung journey niya na una sa lahat, PDP laban nominee siya for president na hindi niya tinanggap. In, in fact, he turned it down several times. And then surprise, October 2, vice president pala itatakbo niya. And then in the end, president pa rin pala itatakbo niya, pero not under PDP laban, but under PDDS. And then President Duterte, after announcing uh, at Komelek, he was retiring from politics. Surprise, kanina, mga just before 5 p.m., um, he filed via proxy his senatorial candidacy under PDDS. So parang yun yung mga major movements na nakita natin. Suddenly, PDP Laban is without a president, without a vice president. Naka CMD has a vice president in the name of Sara Duterte. Uh, and then you have wala pa pala. So wala pang presidential candidate si um, Sara Duterte, which I think uh, gracefully leads into Lian. Um, kasi balita ko na-adopt na si Sarah ng isang party. Thank, Thank you. Lian, Lian is reporting from the BBM uh, headquarters. We have a guest. <laughs> we have a guest behind me. Guest in the back. So, yeah, yeah, Lian, so your, your own uh, reckoning with uh, recent crazy... Right. Uh, ako, I've observed from the BB, BBM camp that they really uh, practice a strategy of silence. Ever since na nag-announce and nag-file ng COCC, former Senator Bongbong Marcos, kumpara sa mga ibang candidate, you would not see them um, going on the campaign with reporters in tow, uh, going on the trail with reporters in tow, making uh, press conferences. Wala silang ganun. Uh, they have had only to uh, react no meron ng isang consequ consequential na nangyari sa kanila as far as they are concerned, which is the filing of the petitions to cancel uh, Bongbong Marcos's COC. Uh, now, of course, uh, the camp of Bongbong Marcos, particularly Attorney Vic Rodriguez's chief of staff and spokesperson, would like to downplay it as a nuisance petition. But of course, alam naman natin na every legal action has a publicity and perception component. And so... I think more than the legal factor, mas makaka-apekta sa kanila yung perception component because it rehashes something that a lot of us do not know. Kasi ako, honestly, I didn't know that he was convicted in 1997. Ngayon ko lang yan nalaman. And so it brings up this past uh, of BBM that he would rather not discuss kasi it goes against the narrative of Di ba wala namang na-convict sa amin? Di ba ganun yung narrative ng mga loyalists na kung totoong nagnakaw sila, bakit walang nakukulong, bakit walang nako-convict? And now there goes this rehashed history na, ah, na-convict na pala siya. And for failure to file ITR, no less. Eh, di ba parang um, ma, 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 dikit sa bituka yung usapang tax. And so, uh, naging consequential yun and they've had to, you know, uh, break their silence once in a while and Attorney Vic Rodriguez have had to face ambush interviews kahit na dapat hindi talaga nila gawain yun. Um, we don't know if the, the petitions played into whether talag, um, mas ginalingan ba nilang ligawan si Sarah or has that deal always been in place? I guess uh, that, that uh, we leave it to speculation. For now, pero uh, leading up to the substitution uh, nitong Friday going to weekend, um, Senate, former Senator Bongbong Marcos was really saying that heavenly kung Duterte, Marcos Duterte yung tandem, whether that's PRRD, whether that's President Duterte or Mayor Sara, he would rather na may, uh, Duterte yung katandem niya and 
quickly after Mayor Sarah filed um, her substitution for VP, agad-agad na nag-issue ang Partido Federal ng Pilipinas ng resolution adopting Mayor Sarah Duterte as the their adopted VP. Now ako, ah, para sa akin, curious lang why Laka CMD isn't so quick to say that BBM is their adopted standard bearer. And I think um, hanggang ngayon ay wala pa silang categorical sinasabi na Bongbong Marcos will be their president. That's, yeah, that's, they that's very interesting. Go ahead, yeah, Bea. Uh, yung sinabi lang nila ay maghahanap sila, mag adopt sila ng standard bearer for Sarah in the words of um, Revilla, dream dream tandem for 2022. Pero wala pa silang sinasabi kung sino ba to, anong alliance ba yung papasukan nila, parang PDP ba to na alliance, or in this case, PDDS na ba yung tawag ngayon sa personalities within PDP? Will this be an alliance with uh, Bongbong Marcos? Although parang si, Senato, uh, sorry, si Rep. Romualdez, who is the president of, of Lakas CMD and the cousin of Bongbong Marcos, parang medyo open at warm yung yung pagdel, pag, pagsalita niya nung tinanong siya kung possible ba na mag, mag -ally, maging allies yung lakas at yung PFP down the road. Pero yun, parang relatively after uh, nag-file si Mayor Sara via substitution, tumahimik na sila ulit. Um, although they did issue a few statements here mm -hmm. and there just to clarify, addressing strangely enough not Duterte's allegations but uh, mga haka-haka sa internet, mga um, in, in sa modern word term pa no, mga marites sa mm -hmm. internet, parang dininay nila na uh, this was GMA's uh, Gloria Macapag Alroyo, who is President Emeritus of, of Lakas CMD, dininay nila na original plan to ni GMA uh, na si Sara magiging VP to Bongbong Marcos. So, parang, pero wala pa yun, parang wala pang gumagalaw in, in heading towards that. And then also, uh, PDDS, Ako confused kasi ako minsan kasi I'm used to covering uh, PDP laban and I am get, we're getting these statements um, regarding PDDS through PDP laban because they do have an alliance na they will also now find um, a vice presidential candidate soon. So everything's up in the air. We, we thought na by 5 p.m. today, no, medyo plastado na kung bagay yung, yung scenarios at yung uh, lineups in the 2022 elections. Pero mukhang hindi pa, mukhang after this, marami pa mga realign. Mas yun nga lang, stuck na sila kasi bawal na sila mag-substitution uh, via withdrawal. Yun lang yun nagbago. You know, we, we took a risk uh, in uh, hosting this special program because the events are still so fresh. But I think uh, we can use this program as a way to process uh, what's been happening and one of one of my quick uh, one of my first takeaways is uh, it depends uh, if if the if the question is what are the highlights the answer depends on who you focus on if you focus on Sarah these are the highlights if you focus on Bong Bong these are the highlights and and so on um, can I ask one question for uh, for all three of you maybe uh, Indai and then uh, Bea and then Lian. Um, is there a method to all this madness? No, I was the political strategy. I was going to to raise that question too, but um, like you know, Bongo, he was VP. He was you know he filed for um, VP um, initially, you not know, before he went to um, for the presidency. Mm -hmm. And here's a curious thing, Jan. Um, when when they had a caravan in Negros, and I asked also other other um, LGU heads no, about him, they were very firm that they were going to support, not the people, the LGU heads, were, going, were supportive of Bongo as vice president. Now, the problem is, hindi kausap ko kanina, pag sabi kong, what about for the presidency, tumahimik, because apparently they had a different president in mind so you know that kind of scrambles all their plans so even the local politicians are confused they don't know exactly what to do at this point yeah i think we're all confused <laughs> uh bea a method to i madness? think i've i think i've come to accept that the method is madness i think diba parang uh what in sanay ka, okay ganito kasi parang in, in 2016 when i covered an uh, an administration uh, party. Parang, kumbaga yung nasanay ako na parang plastado lahat, like everything was pre-planned. But I don't think that's the case with PDP Laban, or at least the personalities that have been leading the Kusi faction of PDP Laban. Parang, 
I think we've, we have yet to see whether they truly thrive in this chaos. Uh, malalaman natin yan siguro in May 2022 pa kung talagang gumagana ba tong, uh, parang kumbaga pag-embrace nila ng chaos in, in the way they, they run things. Diba? Kasi parang ang confusing eh. Diba? After the president who is PDP Laban chairman uh, announced that I would, he would retire, suddenly you have uh, the PDP Laban president, Alfonso Cusi, floating a possible senatorial run. And then eventually we found out, oh, he actually will be running for for, for a Senate seat. So I, I don't, I'm not very, I can't quite grasp yet. Is this to confuse the enemy? Is this to confuse? But, but, but the worry is at the end of the day, allies are confused. And if you notice, uh, PDP Laban, the Kusi faction rather, they've been issuing statements today and yesterday. Basically, kahapon yung statement is they told their allies to toe the line, toe the party line. Um, others read it as a loyalty check. Na parang, oy, mm-hmm. lang. Okay pa tayo mm-hmm. ha. Parang wag muna kayong bumitaw. Kasi parang marami na rin na, na, na concern eh. Through the weeks, di ba? Na parang, sino ba talagang kandidato ng PDP Laban? And then today, parang twice after... Um, after no rather before before senate uh, before president duterte filed for his senatorial candidacy they issued a statement saying that senator goes candidacy would um solidify the pdp laban and pdds alliance solidify their position as the dominant party and then after duterte filed via proxy they issued the same statement so parang uh, kumbaga, after weeks of relative silence, minsan when they issued statements, medyo terse yung statements, ngayon yung PDP Laban or PDDS, PDP Laban, PDDS, parang uh, kumbaga binabalik nila ulit yung naratibo na, teka lang ha, hindi kami, hindi kami weak um, or parang andito pa kami, kami pa rin yung dominant party. So parang, is that a method? I don't know. Will it work? We'll find out, I guess. Lian? Sure. Naramdaman ko yung buntong hininga ni Bea. <laughs> That's all I can say. But uh, yeah, John, to answer your question, as far as Bongbong Marcos is concerned, the method is stick to the unification message. Because if you're such a divisive figure, such as Bongbong Marcos, the son of dictator, parang ayaw mo nang makisali sa gulo. Kaya ang message talaga nila, and if you think about it, oo nga naman, parang unifying leader talaga yung branding sa kanya and if you've observed, he will not indulge you in the narrative of, is this a Robredo Marcos part two face off? Hindi kanya sasagutin sa mga ganun. He will give you a very diplomatic answer and he will pivot to, ang um, concern ko lang ngayon ay how to get us out of the pandemic. Sometimes Attorney Vic Rodriguez's spokesperson will play the political game, like calling the petitioners against Bongbong Marcos Yellow wannabe political assassins. Pero kung si BBM hindi siya magsasabi ng ganon. And I've also observed that they won't comment on something that is not directly related um, to them. And they they would avoid mainstream media um, also. And as I've observed that, kasi every time na magpapa-interview siya sa mainstream media, whether that's one-on-one or ambush interview, makakapagsalita siya na inadvertently magagamit ng mga critics niya. Like for example, he said, sinasabi ni VP Len Robredo na wala siyang kinalaman sa mga petition, then sabihan niya yung mga kaibigan niya na i-withdraw na yun. So nagamit sa kanya yun ng mga critics niya. So parang it's really a strategy of silence and a strategy of I am ako yung mag-unify sa inyong lahat. And I watched his two-hour interview with SMNI last Saturday. Parang sinasabi niya, pati mga kaaway ko, kakaibiganin ko kasi that's uh, in the best interest of the country. And dito sa mga uh, nangyayaring kaguluhan, yung seeming conflict between the father and daughter or even the seeming conflict between um, Senator Bongo and Mayor Sara Duterte, I don't think it would serve his interest to uh, parang makisaw-saw sa gulo. Kaya nga hindi sila nagsalita ngayon eh. I mean, I was here all day. Wala talaga silang in-address kahit isa. Hindi bumaba si Attorney Rodriguez para harapin kami. It's just um silence from the uh, BBM camp. Kasi parang uh, at this point, di ba naligawan niya si uh, President Rodrigo Duterte to be his VP? Tapos ngayon, biglang nag sabi, magba-vice president, tapos biglang magsi-senator. And uh, as we remember, nung weekend, nagpa-interview siya sa isang blogger where he said, 
uh, pakana ni Bongbong Marcos yung pag uh, pag um, takbo ni Sara na hindi niya siya supportahan si Bongbong Marcos at tinawag niya pa to the extent which is malabo na pro communist si Bongbong Marcos pag direktan pa yon ni Bongbong Marcos it would seem like ano ba talaga alay niyo ba siya nag-uusap ba kayo bakit ganun so mas advantageous sa kanya yung hindi na lang sumali sa gulo parang yun that is his method and in so, in many ways that is uh, working to his advantage kasi hindi siya talaga masas- hindi hindi niya willingly isasama yung sarili niya sa gulo which might negatively impact all of them in the administration this uh, strategy of silence uh, is also the strategy of a front runner no? he can afford to take this stack because he is uh, doing well Well, when we come back, we will be joined by Davao Congressional Candidate Mags Maglana. She's running against Polong Duterte. What does she think of the substitution circus? Mags, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Mayong gabi. As someone who's seen the Duterte brand of governance and approach to campaigning for a long time, What is your take on the dizzying series of withdrawals and substitutions? Gandang gabi sa inyo lahat. Hi, Ma'am Inday. Hi, Bea and Dian. And of course, John. Kanina ginamit na yung, I guess, the devices of referring to it as a circus. Tapos yung the notion of method in the madness. Pero ako parang naisip ko, baka pwede nating ibalik dun sa that grand narrative ng Uh, war on drugs, no? Or iugnay doon. Kasi itong war on drugs ay ginawang plataforma ng kampanya at isang naging device para ma-other or uh, ma-exclude ang maraming tao at naging war on the poor, itong war against illegal drugs, no? May nagsabi kasi na parang uh, yung itong uh, nangyari, uh, or nangy- nangy- nangyayari at nang- nangyari, nag-kick today ay uh, examples ng uh, withdrawal symptoms at mad search for substitutes that uh, point to extreme addiction to power no? uh, and, and power that uh, uh, is, is in the interest of protecting uh, siguro one's own agenda no? or, or, or at least stay where you are. So yun, no? naisip ko baka pwedeng tingnan din yun kasi nga yung play ng withdrawal symptoms and uh, search for substitutes. Wow, that's, um, but a, uh, dun, that's a very powerful uh, metaphor. But go ahead, Max, you're saying? Uh, kasi kukwento ko lang na uh, nakinig din ako sa mga taga-Dabao na try to observe kung ano yung mga reaksyon. Kasi uh, simula pa lang nung Sabado, uh, parang nag-trigger na ng pagkalito. Eh, no? Dahil nung, nung, nung Sabado, late Saturday afternoon, parang nagsabi pa si Presidente na baka tatakbo siyang... Uh, Uh, Vice President under uh, Senator uh, Bongos, uh, PDDS nga, no? At, at naisip nga, ano ba to? Will this lead to a situation where uh, the father would uh, be pitted against the daughter? No? Yeah. So, pagkalito is one of the reactions. Uh, bukod doon, uh, meron din mga nadismaya. So, pagkadismaya as a reaction. Kasi marami pa rin naman ang, uh, uh, ng, uh, pinangahawakan yung statement ni uh, President Duterte noong March 30, 2016, nung sinabi niya, uh, in, in reference to, uh, I think, the Marcos Cessna, Yeah. So I will dishonor the memory of my mother by following the person that she helped put down. No? So parang the point is that, sinabi niya yun noong 20, 2016, but why uh, is the landscape uh, sh- uh, taking shape now na baka mag-ally nga itong mga Duterte sa, sa mga Marcoses? No? Um, kanina, I think, Bea, you said uh, parang uh, ang reference ay Marcos Duterte as a dream tandem, no? pero... At tingin ko kasi any tandem that has uh, Marcos in it ay, uh, has the potential of being a bangungot tandem, no? Uh, lalo na pag meron pang arroyo na dagdag. Uh, meron ding mga nainis, no? Nainis. Kasi, um, kasi ano eh, uh, maraming naniniwala na parang uncalled for yung pagtakbo ni uh, Mayor Sarah as vice dahil di ba the, if you are to go by the parang the the the, the, the studies that are being quoted no, or the surveys being quoted talaga namang she's leading the pack no so bakit siya nag-slide down no and and to a mark of that so may mga nadismaya um pero pero marami na umay kasi nga parang umobra siguro yung substitution nung 2016 no at at the national level pero parang 2021 na ngayon for the 2022 elections parang sana umangat yung political strategy pero ang nakita kasi natin mas lalong tumindi lang no uh, 
Uh, tama naman na hindi bago ang substitution, ginagamit talaga siya sa politika ng Pilipinas o nagagamit siya sa politika ng Pilipinas. Pero ito yata yung unang pagkakataon na talagang at the national level ay eh, uh, extreme yung paggamit no, ng, ng <laughs> substitution. Kaya nga sabi ko nga kanina, uh, withdrawal symptoms and a mad scramble for substitute all point to an extreme addiction to power. At, at finally, may mga nagdududa, tuloy or napapaisip, no? um, bakit kailangan tumakbo pareho ang ang mag-ama no lalo na at alam natin na uh, natin na uh, best of health si presidente at nagsasabi nang magre-retire no uh, may mga threats ba na iniiwasan uh, at ano ang mga threats na yon at kanino against no or kung usapin naman ng interes uh, anong mga interes ang ang mga pinapangalagaan by deciding to run at uh, uh, kaninong interes no um pero meron din mga nagsasabi na baka itong ang desisyon na pag uh, uh, tuloy ng pagtakbo ay isa isa sa mga magiging bargaining chip. So the withdrawal, uh, the decision to withdraw later, hindi pwede pa naman siya mag-withdraw later, ay pwede maging bargaining chip sa uh, political negotiation. So I'll stop there muna, John. Okay, Mags, uh, I, have, I have one question and then I'd, I'd like to invite my fellow journalists to also uh, ask questions. Uh, Max, uh, of the five uh, reactions that you outlined, uh, I'm looking at yung pagkainis at yung pagkadismaya that uh, uh, Mayor Sara is, in the end, just running for just vice president. Um, of course, uh, you know, it's hard to predict the future. Uh, but um, how do you think running for a lower position like vice president would affect her Uh, perform her uh, election performance in Davao City. Uh, well, uh, ano naman eh, di ba? Kung uh, yung mga talagang sumusuporta sa mga Duterte ay sa pancha ko ay regardless ko anong susuporta, anong, anong tatakbo ang posisyon ni uh, Mayor Sara ay susuportahan pa rin siya. Walang wala naman yatang mababago dun. Pero marami kasi naniniwala na she could have done better as a presidential aspirant rather than uh, slide down to a VP position at uh, malamang ang makakasama niya pa ay si Marcos Jr. No? At uh, uh, hindi naman uh, dapat hindi nakakalibutan yung Davao City kasi ay naging uh, naging ano to eh naging uh, aktibo ito sa anti-dictatorship struggle nung panahon ni Marcos. No? So parang medyo malaking uh, sampal <laughs> at kaya may pagkainis na uh, mag-a-align pa silang dalawa kung sakasakali. Thank you. But, John, can I ask a question? Uh, go ahead, please. Yeah. Okay. Mag, you know, you say na baka may pagkainis sa mga taga-Davao dahil nga um, it was the center of anti-Marcos protest. But, Mag, pinalibing niya yung tatay ni Marcos Jr. sa libigan ng mga bayani and yet the people of Davao have always stuck with the president so parang what what would make it different right now na 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 posibleng i-adapt rin naman ni Marcos Jr. ang kanilang Sara Duterte as vice VP I mean medyo hindi ko nakikita masyado yung kung paano paano mag magalit dahil sa punto na yan? Well, una, tingin ko yung pagkagalit ay really, yung, yun na nga, yung the, the idea na um, mas malakas si, ano eh, mas parang mas malakas si uh, Sarah kesa kay BBM, no? And at Marcus Jr. And so, bakit kailangan mag-slide down siya? Yung pagdugtong dun sa uh, pagkainis sa, ano, sa uh, usapin ng Marcos, may may um, may elemento kasi no, nung nung nagpasya si Duterte na payagan na ilibing si Marcos Sr. sa libigan ng mga bayani ay may mga nakapag-rationalize noon na sige kasi libing no at paggalang sa patay parang ganoon pa pero etong etong ito itong pag pagpayag na maaring bumalik ulit sa pinakamataas na posisyon yung anak ng diktador ay parang mahirap i-rationalize dahil na sinabi mo nung March no March uh, 2016 na he did this honor mo yung memory ng nanay mo by following the person that she have put down no so how do you yan medyo mas mahirap i-rationalize yan so sa tingin ko may ganung class may elemento ng uh, ng uh, discomfort pagkainis na at yan that that needs to be taken into account 
Actually, yun din yung follow-up ko, no? Na kung yung alliance ba with Marcos is really a turn-off or will it be a discussion of malakas talaga yung Duterte magic? And if so, if Mayor Sara says, yes, BBM is my president, then burado lahat ng discomfort and it will actually help bring Mindanao or Davao to vote for BBM. So actually, yun din yung tanong ko sa utak, if it's really a turn-off or actually a very strategic move for BBM to court Sara. Well, I think that's their hope, Leanne. No? That's, uh, that, that's what they want to happen, no? na mapag-combine nga nila itong uh, powerful uh, political families na ito. Uh, pero hindi natin pwedeng i-rule out yung mamamayan, no? yung sentimiento ng mamamayan. Uh, hindi, hindi makakalimutan na nung panahon nung Marxist dictatorship, uh, lalo na nung pag-declare ng Marshall Law nung 1972, yung first na public statement na talagang condemning the excesses of the dictatorship, uh, lalo na yung human rights abuses, nanggaling yun sa Davao, no? si um, uh, Archbishop uh, Antonio Mabutas naglabas nung, nung nanong statement. No? At, at sinundan yun soon after that, uh, nagkaroon na ng, ng mga series of, of protests. So, um, ma- ma- mahalagang maalala yun at if mapaalala sa mga taga-Davao, na huwag, huwag natin kakalimutan yun at panindigan natin. I have a question for both Mags and uh, Bea. And it has to do with Pulong Duterte, Deputy Speaker and Representative from the 1st District of Davao. Um, he has been following a strategy of silence also. We haven't heard from him. Anong, what's, what's happening with Pulong? Does he approve of uh, um, the developments? Mags first and then uh, Bea. Uh, oh, oh, um, medyo ano din, uh, parang nag- Tataka din kami kung bakit wala masyadong naririnig mula kay uh, uh, Congressman uh, Pulong Duterte. Ano? Kasi um, una, uh, alam natin na mag- mag- dikit na dikit ang magkapatid, no? si uh, uh, Mayor Sara at si Congressman Duterte. Uh, and, and given these changes, no? um, kinag- kinatakbo si uh, Vice Mayor Baste as mayor, at ito nga ang desisyon na tatakbo ulit si uh, President Duterte as senator, uh, they concern the family, no? So one would have thought na may maririnig tayo mula sa eldest. No? So medyo nga yung silence ay nakakapagtaka. Uh, kung kama yung uh, isa sa reading mo dyan na, ano yun, no? that's a sign of confidence, maybe. But yeah, that's been noticed, no? Ano kaya ang paningin at pananaw ni uh, uh, Congressman Duterte at this one? Uh, you know, it's, it's it's not just um, Congressman Pulong who's been quiet. Like, si, kahit si Sarah mismo, if you notice her statements, parang you feel the, um, you get the impression that she's trying to distance herself from the drama. Like, she doesn't really address yung parang, ay, kakailabangan din daw ako ng tate ko, or parang may ganitong allegation, si President Duterte against whoever, against Bongbong Marcos or whatever. Like, uh, one of her her statement uh, the, uh, yesterday, um, na recorded and then she also repeated it earlier today via radio. Parang yung message niya is that parang PDP Laban's problems are its own. Uh, yung yeah. one of the lines that stood out was parang this will this doesn't matter now. This won't matter in the future because what mm. matters. Parang you, she sticks to the messaging that what what matters is uh, COVID recovery, economic recovery. So parang you also get the impression that she does not want to be pulled into the drama which is ironic kasi dramatic din yung filing niya yeah. <laughs> um, as a vice presidential candidate but which actually makes me wonder like for for her like diba syempre she steps into the national political scene as Sara Duterte as the daughter of the incumbent president uh, Max I'm just wondering like paano niya ibabalance yun kasi alam naman natin diba obviously Sara is a very independent mind hindi siya sumusunod lang sa patriarch mm-hmm. ng Duterte clan but how will she like how does she position herself in Davao City like does she parang dumidikit ba siya na ako ang anak ni Rodrigo Duterte therefore uh, para pagkatiwalaan niyo rin ako and, and like how does that predict how she'll also uh, you know how how she'll run her national campaign in 2022 uh, ang ang dating palagi ni Mayor Sara ay she's her own person at yeah. hindi siya uh, takot manindigan no? uh, sa sarili niyang mga paningin uh, sa mga bagay-bagay. And even if that puts her uh, parang in, in conflict with her father. No? And, and um, 
so uh, sa tingin ko naman uh, in in, uh, in in fairness i don't think she's dangled the uh, i'm the daughter of uh, president Duterte card not that i know of anyway but i could be mistaken uh, pero ano hindi mo rin naman may tatago na dahil nga Duterte siya ay merong ano ay uh, may if merong inherent na uh, dating na na power na influence yung apelyido na yan and and so when she speaks she speaks not just as Sara but also as a Duterte and uh, fancy uh, a favor Duterte at that I have a question for Bea and Inday uh, Bea also already mentioned this uh, when she did a summary of the most important events of the last few days and that has to do and it's about PDP Laban in the end, the ruling party has no candidates. Uh, what's next for PDP Laban, Bea? And uh, Inday, you've covered PDP Laban for years through the ups and downs. Is this an up or a down? Bea, yeah. um, well, they do have senatorial candidates. And strangely mm-hmm. enough, sa, sa kanilang statement kanina, di ba, para, uh, sa kanilang statement kanina, they said something like, we now have a complete slate. To which I was personally wondering, where is the complete <laughs> slate? No, kasi, kasi ganito, um, since COC filing week, wala pa sila formally in-announce na Senate slate, di ba? Para nagtaas ng kamay si, si President Duterte ng mga anointed candidates niya, pero hindi yun umabot ng 12. Um, and then, in natin na, ah, baka kasi may mga substitutions na papasok. Uh, one of the uh, candidates that we were expecting to come in via substitution was Secretary Bello, pero at the end of the day, hindi siya nag-file. So, um, you, you, I think going back to what I said earlier, no, na parang hindi pa pala tapos yung alignments at yung uh, pagbuo ng mga lineup, at least for the administration allied parties for PDP Laban, PDDS, kung, uh, however you want to call them. Siguro moving forward now, it's going to be PDP, PDDS, no, kasi parang syempre yung standard better mo, PDDS yung bit bit. Um, we, w- did we see this coming? Yes. Uh, 2019 pa lang, nakikita na natin yung cracks ng PDP laban. Siyempre, all out na siya leading into uh, COC filing week. Diba, nagka-factions na. And I think the greatest irony of it all, kasi when people were one, were, when we found out that uh, Senator Go would be filing under PDDS and not PDP laban, siyempre yung tanong, bakit? Ano nangyari? Um, and the simple explanation was, um, dahil may unresolved leadership issues in PDP laban, that's kusi, that was a kusi statement, na parang eh, kayo nag-file sa Comelec eh, ng, ng case um, wanting Comelec to declare the faction led by Senator Pacquiao and Senator Coco Pimentel as illegitimate. Also, side story ulit, si Senator Pacquiao filed under PROM D and not PDP Laban. Kinik out nila si Senator Pacquiao unilaterally from PDP Laban kasi nga, bakit mo ginamit ang ibang ka... Maraming nangyayari. Anyway, yung, yung point lang dito is we kind of saw this coming, di ba? Na parang um, medyo magulo sa PDP Laban and in the end, they dropped the name uh, in, in the ticket, in their ticket or in the, for their standard bearer. Thanks. And I? Sige, pag pinag-usapan natin ng PDP Laban in the first place, Jan, what it is right now is what? It's a bad memory. It's, 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 a, it's, a, <laughs> it's a grotesque remnant of the original PDP Laban. I mean, what have they done all these six years, you know? And um, number two, it, you know, in the scheme of things, if you look at all the parties now, it doesn't really matter if PDP has a complete slate in the sense that taga PDP sila because we see all the different political parties um, and and even the opposition um, uh, slate for that matter have been adopting, you know, um, from each other, you know. So there, are, I think it all boils down sa Ano ang pwede nating quid pro quo after the elections? Who can we who can we support that can win that can that will owe us IOUs after the election? Because when this comes down pagdating lalo na kay Duterte and if we're talking about PD Pilaban, let's face it, si Duterte ang ang kanilang principal. Um ang usapin nito talaga ay accountability. And this is probably one reason kung bakit ang gulo-gulo-gulo nila. No? Because they really need to make sure 
what he has ICC, he has formally mm-hmm. and there are the continuing drug stories, you know, surrounding um his presidency. Mm-hmm. And dito rin ako siguro papasok na magsasabi ka that if I were Bongbo Marcos, whether or not he's eventually supported um formally by um Sarah's group, I'd be really very nervous right now because um any support for him will hinge on how well he can support President Duterte after 2022. And that's probably also the reason why the president um, filed the COC for the Senate. He, he wants to stack his cards to better evade accountability. And that's something that we should never forget going into the election. Thank you, Indai. We have about five minutes left. Uh, I have a question for Lian uh, and then Mags. No, uh, it's it's a precisely about the disqualification case that Bong Bong faces. Uh, Lian, from your perspective, uh, covering the BBM uh, uh, campaign, uh, what do they think of this? Uh, do do they think that in fact the uh, disqualification case uh, puts a, a gives President Duterte a leverage over Bongbong Marcos, and then for Mags, my question is: is is this kind of uh, behavior something that we should expect from Duterte? You know, you've you've lived in Davao for some time. I mean, this kind of uh, uh, you know brazen use of power is that something that uh, we should expect from Duterte? Uh, which do that <laughs> yeah, to to answer your question, John, it's hard to gauge right now, no, kung ano yung talagang pagtingin nila. Kasi in public, they would just downplay it. And for us reporters covering, um, before ang nangyari nitong weekend, you think that they're really alas. And yung disqualification kay Bong Bong is also parang non uh, a non issue to the Duterte pero dahil dun sa nangyari nung weekend at yung pronouncement ni President Duterte dun sa blogger bigla ka ring bigla ka ring na confuse kung um, is President Duterte going to use that as leverage on Bongbong but yun nga again um, because of their strategy of silence uh, the 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 image or the projection that, that they would want to show the public is hindi sila kasali sa gulong to. And I think that's very also advantageous to them. Kasi ayaw nila talagang sumali sa gulong. Kasi parang hindi mo rin naman gustong galitin si President Duterte because you would be losing a lot of fan base then kapag uh, you would go against them. And nakakahiya rin naman sa kanila if they would... Uh, they would entertain yung mga ganong klaseng narrative because for a long time, sinasabi nila na nililigawa nila sa President Duterte. So to indulge in that kind of narrative would be, uh, I guess, uh, would be embarrassing for them at this point. Thank you. Mags? Uh, John, I was not kidding when I said which Duterte. No? But oh, uh, 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 President, uh, President Duterte. Uh, yeah, if it's, uh, if, if it's, uh, if it's, uh, if it's uh, President Duterte, uh, hindi na siguro natin pagtatakhan yung ship. Kasi di ba 2016, ganun yung mensahe niya. Yung campaign, no? uh, dishonor my mother's uh, memory. Tapos nung ano, pinalibing niya si Marcos Sr. Tapos thank you to Manang Aimi for the campaign contributions. At ngayon nga, uh, medyo kumakabyo, uh, pro-communist daw si, uh, si, si uh, Marcos Jr., no? Sa, may nagbiro nga tuloy kung pro-communist si Marcos Jr. Ano na kaya ang the rest of us? No? Uh, so, kung ituloy-tuloy yan, posible talaga na nagagamit ng, ng, ng leverage no? para nga makakuha ng concession. We, we really don't know. Uh, but, but yun na nga, at, at, at sinasabi, kahit hindi natin nakikita kung ano yung configuration, kung lang kalimutan yung key questions. Kasi ang key question talaga ay, lahat ng nangyayaring ito, kaninong interes ang pinapangalagaan, kaninong interes ang uh, tinataguyod, no? Ang, mama, ma, sa, ang mamamayan ba, ang makikinabang ng lahat ng ito, or gagamitin uli ang pangalan natin uh, in the name of uh, justifying these, uh, these uh, extreme uh, behaviors, no? Uh, well, John, if I, if I, if I if yes, just please. allow me one, one more point. Kanina si Attorney Jimenez ng Comelec nag-announce siya tungkol sa Nuisan candidates, no? Uh, sabi niya, uh, of, of 97 presidential uh, filers, baka 82 yung ma-declare ma- ma- as uh, uh, Nuisan sa BP yata, 15 of 29, 
sa Senator 108 of, of 176 Paulus. Pero alam mo, naisip ko, uh, alam mo, dapat kingilin natin yung mga political parties for their nuisance behavior. Ang napaparusahan kasi yung nuisance candidate, diba? the person who is running. Pero kung tingin mo yung uh, three, three grounds ng nuisance uh, behavior <laughs> sa, sa, sa COMELEC guidelines. Yung una, yung filing the COC to put the election process in mockery or distribute. Hindi ba ganun ang nangyayari ngayon? Nag, na, nawawalan tuloy ng gana ang maraming tao sa uh, election or nagbududa or or nawawalan ng tiwala kasi nga ano ba yan? Ano ba itong nangyayaring ito? Parang parang ano eh, parang yung uh, laro na uh, itatago yung ano, yung uh, yung bato under different shells, no? Uh, at hulaan niya kung saan lalabas sa dulo. Uh, tapos yung din punto nga na um, yung mga political aspirants or operators naman na, tuma- na, na pumapayag na mag-file pero lumalabas, wala silang bonus fee the intention to really run for the office that they filed for. Kasi pumapayag magpapalit eh. So, wala, hindi pa natin i-hold accountable ang mga political parties sa ginagawa nilang ito. So, kung, kung merong nuisance candidate, baka yung nuisance behavior ng party, dapat i-call talaga yan at gawa ng paraan. Thanks, Mags. Uh, you know, the title of this episode is The Substitution Circus because it really has uh, come down to that. Uh, and uh, basically what you're saying is that we must let the clowns and the parties who send the clowns in, uh, we must hold them to account. Uh, I, I can't let this go without uh, noting that, uh, in fact, Ferdinand Marcos, the dictator, was the number one recruiter for the communists. Uh, in his presidency, the number of uh, NPA regulars uh, rose from about 1,000 to about 25,000. Um, I, I think that uh, we shouldn't uh, allow ourselves to forget that. You know, there are still many, many things that we can discuss. Uh, it has been a really interesting discussion with you, all the way from a dream tandem to a bad memory. <laughs> Uh, and everything in between. Uh, but we have to say uh, goodbye. Uh, so that's it for us tonight. My uh, sincere thanks to Mags Maglana of Davao City and to my tireless and insightful Rappler colleagues, Indai, Bea, and Lian. Follow us on the campaign trail because it isn't just elections as usual. This Wednesday, we sit down with Cavite Governor John Vic Remulia. This is John Neri. Good night. <laughs>